Today we are going to be talking about my new purchase, the 8K Red Weapon Helium. So I don't need to deliver my videos in 8K or 6K or 5K or 7K, but the industry is now adapting to 4K. All TVs are 4K now. So if I'm shooting in 8K and I want to deliver my video in 4K, I have twice the resolution to work with in post-production. I can restabilize my footage, I can reframe it, I can, you know, I can do I have a lot more flexibility in scaling when my footage is twice as big as I need it. It's gonna have just that much more detail, and I want that much more detail. Another reason I love this camera, and not even this model specifically, but all red cameras, is that it's modular. Now what I mean by that is you can build the camera out as big or as small as you need to depending on what your production requires. Now if you're doing a run and gun shoot and you don't have time to take things, you know, put them on and off the camera or build it up or whatever, you can just run light. And yes, red cameras are run and gun cameras if you do it right. I don't like, you know, people say that, oh, you can't use that on a glide cam. You can't run around with that thing. It's super heavy. Yeah, it's super heavy, but you don't always have to throw it on a glide cam. You can just go handheld and it's so heavy that it'll be pretty stable. You don't really need to worry about bumpy footage, um, but you can build it out. So this is the very basic model right here in terms of uh, how much you can build onto the camera. I do have this um, red 7.0 uh, LCD screen screwed into the top here with an electronic mount and I have the red handle up here which by the way this red handle is sick I didn't even know this existed um, I love taking my camera off the tripod this happens a lot on shoots I'll have it on the tripod I'll be moving it around and I just don't feel as connected to my camera as I want to be so I'll just take it right off the sticks hold it in my hand move it around I feel much more connected to the shot if I'm holding the camera. Even if I'm barely moving it, I like holding the camera. It's just my style. And when I'm doing that, especially in the lower angle shots where I'm getting, you know, getting down low to the ground, I can just hold it by the handle. And this has a record button right on it, right there. I didn't know this existed until I got the camera. So I can, I can be holding this if I'm hanging off the back of a truck filming a runner or a car or a bike or whatever it is. I don't even have to have to reach around to this record button here or on the side. I can just hold it by the, the handle right here, hit record, boom, and I'm good. And I can just you know keep holding onto the handle. So that's really, really cool. In the back here, this is the base expander where you can plug in all your extra, um, you know, you can do your, uh, your, your sync input, your control input, you have your HDMI and SDI inputs or an, ex uh, an extra power input. Um, if you're using external monitors, you can plug it in via HDMI or SDI, but the base expander is super useful. And what's great about the weapon is it's completely wireless, unlike the previous Dragon where I had cables hanging off the thing everywhere. I got this V-mount uh, v module from Wooden Camera right here. And what this does is I can screw this right into the back and just like that, I have a V mount adapter right into the back. Again, it doesn't need to be plugged in via cables or anything like that. Get my V mount battery right here and then plug that right in the back, plugs right in, ready to go. No cables needed, just the V mount adapter. So this is what I mean by modular. You can build things on to attach other accessories. And you can do that also with external monitors, with um, wireless, you know, if you have a Teradek or a cheaper video signal output device, you can plug right in here. All screws in the back here. Extra monitors, and even in the front here, this is an EF lens mount. This is what I use, I use EF lenses. But eventually I'll be upgrading to PL lenses. You can unscrew this, screw in a PL, len a PL lens mount, and you can just use PL lenses. But the lens mount itself is interchangeable. And behind the lens mount is an OLPF filter, an optical low pass filter, which kind of fine tunes your highlights and your darks and your skin tones and makes your image even that much more clear. But that is also built in right in front of the sensor, which also acts as a sensor guard if you get too close. In many opinions, the nicest camera sensor on the market. Huge dynamic range. I think this has like 17 stops of dynamic range. And red is a very popular name. It's used in a lot of 
very well-known productions like Stranger Things on Netflix. A lot of huge, big budget productions use RED cameras because of the name and the reliability and the build quality. This thing is super robust. On top of all that, it feels really good. I love holding this thing. It just sort of has that, like, an aura about it that just makes you want to be more creative when you're holding it. Shooting in RED RAW has changed my life. Typically on a lower end DSLR camera, even if you're shooting a flatter log profile, you have a lot of flexibility with your color and your shadows and your white balance in post-production. But for the most part, your image is baked into the footage and you can't really change it. If you overexposed or underexposed, you might have a little bit of a flexibility, for the, but for the most part, you're basically stuck with the way it looks. With red raw data or metadata, I don't have to worry about any of that. Yeah, I can set my ISO and set my white balance and my contrast and my light curves and stuff like that. I can set all of that in the camera, but I don't have to stress over it too much or sweat over it because I know that all of that can just be changed in post-production because I already have that raw data to work with. So that when I'm doing my editing or my color grading or color correction, I can just change all of those settings as if it was the first time. I can even change my color profile. So it's just a huge asset knowing if I do a shoot in California and I come back here and I realize that my camera was set too dark or my ISO was too low, I can just change my ISO. Or I can just change my white balance. Shoot proxies, this thing also shoots proxies. So I can shoot 8K footage at the same time. It also shoots 2K versions of that footage. So I don't have to edit these giant files. I can edit proxies and then reattach those edits to my larger files without slowing down my computer in post-production. For now, those are the very, very basics about the RED camera. I didn't talk too much about it. If there's anything you want to know, leave it in the comments section. Hearing from you guys makes me want to do more videos, and I definitely would love to do more videos. And if you're watching, I'll see you next time. Take it easy.